I wrote, I write a lot about Knoxville because Knoxville is my heart. And I, I'm an, an old woman who's learned after all of these years, and I laugh about it, Jenny's here, I learned to cry. I used to not be able to cry, which is one reason I had a seizure. And I had a seizure because I held things in. But I finally learned to cry. And so when we drove in, coming into Knoxville last evening, I, I looked and I said to Jenny, there's the old gym theater. Now, there was nothing there, so Jenny, <laughs> nothing's there. And as we came in and we looked at other places, I said, this is something that I know. These are places that I know. And my grandmother just meant so much, she means so much to me. And I know that people say that people are dead. I, 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 I don't like that term anymore. I'm old enough to know people don't die. They transition, they change, something else happens. If I put a, a weed in the ground, it's gonna grow. Something else is gonna happen. And I think it's important that we started to look at that. I wrote a poem that I'd like to share. It's called Knoxville, Tennessee. And I loved it because I would come to stay with grandmother. And what we would do if at the top of Vine Street, Vine and Mulvaney, Mrs. Long, who some of you probably don't remember, but the Carnegie Library, Andrew Carnegie gave the library. Mrs. Long, would, would, I'd go up to the library, but before I'd go, grandmother on Monday washed. And when she washed, we would have to hang the sheets out. Now, y'all don't know that. I said to my students the other day, we were talking about telephones, and I said to my students, you remember telephones, don't you? And they looked at me. I said, you remember party lines? And they had no idea what a party line was. And I said, this is how we used to communicate. And they were like, you didn't have a cell phone? <laughs> you say no. But I used to come with my grandmother down here. Larry Johnson is a minister, and he illustrated this for me. And I wrote it because I, I dedicated it to grandmother and grandpapa. I always like summer best. You can eat fresh corn from daddy's garden, and okra, and greens, and cabbage. Remember, you go up to the market, and when grand, Grandpapa wouldn't let Grandmother go to the market because Grandmother was a pretty woman. And <laughs> that's a long story, but you send a pretty black woman to the market, you know there's going to be a problem. And Grandpapa cared about her, so he knew he, somebody said something to her, you'd have to shoot somebody. They would come back and they'd have to lynch him, and it would be ugly. So what he did was he went to the market. When he got too old to go to the market, I started to go. And what I remember about the market was going up and the chicken man, the chicken man said, are you Ms. Watson's granddaughter? And I'd say yes, and he'd give me, because nobody else wanted them, he'd give me a little bucket full of, of, of chicken livers. And I could take them home and grandmother would fry them. And so I didn't mean to, <laughs> for those of us who write. And lots of barbecue and buttermilk and homemade ice cream, which I still make the best homemade ice cream. At the church picnic. And listen to gospel music outside at the church homecoming. And go to the mountains with your grandmother, which we used to do. Excuse me. And go barefoot and be warm all the time, not, but not just when you go to bed. And sleep. That's. So as I say, church used to open with the everlasting arms. So I would like to close just briefly. What a fellowship. What a joy divine, leaning on the ever.